So good afternoon, everybody. How was the days long today? Huh? So how was the test? Good. Easy. So the time was pretty tight, sir. Good. Time. Time is always tight. In life, time is always tight. So, but can you just give like one only one submission and just have a hour long paper? You, we can, but uh, do you know uh, that uh, submission of 20, 30 pages on a PDF sheet is often very difficult. So all those take a lot of difficulty and time. You already saw that for submitting three, four pages, some students had problems. The yes, uploading sir. and all that causes huge difficulty. But sir, in this case, we only have to upload once and like. Yeah, have you ever done some 20 page submission? Sir, I've done 10 to 12 page submission. 10 to 12 page won't work here. It will become longer. Mm -hmm. So it's but a problem. We won't. Uh, so we'll, we, I will continue with this only. Okay. There are other reasons also. I'll, I'll let you know later. Okay, sir. So, uh, uh, in place of taking one PDF, uh, you can uh, take two or three PDFs, but only one. The submission will be done only one, so that. Uh, no, no, that, that, what what is wrong here? here because is... sir, uh, each time when we, uh, like in my case, I uh, make the PDF in phone, then I have to send it to through my mail, then I have to download from my laptop, and that. That's take all a right, but there was nobody who could not submit. Everybody submit. The, we we did not we made sure that anybody who had a problem we took care of that. That is not an issue. Chalo. So let's continue. Uh, somehow I cannot see the screen. Can you all see the screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, why am I having a problem seeing the screen? Let me do one thing. Just give me a moment. I'll sign out and sign in. So last day we did this concept of propositional logic where we had Boolean variables and then we coded them as sentences and then we developed truth tables. We did examples like I am the president, I am well known, etc, etc. We coded them, then we converted them to truth tables and we discussed four terms namely validity, satisfiability, unsatisfiability and non-validity. A formula is said to be valid if it is true for all interpretations and a formula is said to be satisfiable if it is true for at least one interpretation and an interpretation is an assignment of truth values to the Boolean variables and once I assign an interpretation or truth values to the Boolean variables, Invariably, the formula becomes true or false. A formula which is true for all interpretations is said to be valid. And we saw several examples. Now you work out this example, please. All of you, please work out this example.
So what what would be my Boolean variables? A. A M J D. No, what 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 is my Boolean variable? A A. What would A be? Arjun is thin. Arjun is thin. What would B be? Mohit is not. Mohit is bearded. Mohit is bearded. What would be C? Julia is tall. What would be D? Devika is graceful. Anything else? Any other variables or four variables are enough? Enough. Four are enough. Sir. What is F1? First sentence. A implies not B or not C. Everybody agrees? Yes. yes. What is F2? C implies B. F3? D union B implies A. Union? From where did union come? So like and. Then. D and B. Implies? A. A. A and B. What is my goal? B, not C. Ah, not C. Good. So this is how we do proposition. So there is another statement also. Mohit is bearded. Ah, there is another statement. So this is actually F2 is here. No? Where is the statement? Uh, sir, it will be F4. Uh, last yes, sir. F4. F4. F4B. Correct, correct. F4 is B. Correct, correct. Good. Right, clear, everybody? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, we come to the statements that we had talked about the other day. That when we start writing statements where we cannot list out all elements. These issues. Cause problems in proposition logic modeling. Because we cannot list out. This wherever. It could be infinite and if it is infinite, then it is a problem. So in order to do that, we move to what is called predicate logic. In predicate logic, we add a few new things. Firstly, Boolean logic had only Boolean variables and connectors. We add the concept of variables. Why do we add the concept of variables so that we can encode this wherever, some, etc. Then in addition to propositions, we extend the concept of a proposition to what is called a predicate symbol. A predicate symbol is a multi-argument proposition. If you consider a proposition which says in the first one, we would like to write a proposition goes X, Y, where we says X goes to Y. So this is a Boolean uh, predicate. It is a Boolean relation. It takes values true and false. Can you guess what X and Y would be? Variables. What? Variables. Very good. X and Y are variables. So you can have multi-argument functions. Now, 
how do we model people like Mary, school, lamb? They are modeled as constants. So here, Mary, school, lamb. As a notation in our class, we will use capital letters to start with uh, all constants. We will use small letters to start with propositions, predicates, and variables. And later on, we will see that like propositions with arguments become predicates, constants with arguments will become what? We will come to that at some point in time. That constants with arguments will become functions and means. Other than these, in addition to our normal connectors and or not implies, etc., we introduce two new connectors. These connectors are also called quantifiers. One of them is called the there exist quantifier. The other is called the for all quantifier. And we will use them to quantify the variables. How will we use them to quantify the variables? So we will write this wherever Mary goes. So does the lamb. We will write for all X goes Mary X implies. Can anybody tell me what will I write? Goes Lamb X. Lamb X. Right. So the for all X says that for every X, if goes Mary X is true, then goes lamb x is also true for the same x. How will we write Mary goes to school? We'll write goes Mary school. This becomes my F1. This becomes my F2. And my goal becomes goes lamb school. And all I want to do again is to prove F1 and F2 implies G is a tautology. That means it is true under all interpretations. So to prove that it is true under all interpretations, my uh, definition of interpretation will have to be enlarged because I am now using new quantifiers. I'm now using variables. I'm now using predicate symbols, function symbols, etc. So this is how things will become more complicated. But the underlying principle is to prove that this statement is valid. My deduction, my deduction will always be that my facts or my premises implying the goal is always true. If the premises are false, then everything is true anyway. It doesn't make sense. But it says that if the premises are true, then the derived deduction or the inference is also true. Take the second one. What will I write? What predicates will I have? In the second one, what predicates will I have? Contractor X. Correct. Contractor X. Engineer X. Engineer X. Dependable X. Good. Very good. How will I write no contractors are dependable? For all X, uh, uh, negation of uh, contractor X. 
for all x negation of contractor x. What will that mean? There is no concept of dependability here. If you write for all x, if you write, if you write for all x, negation no. of contractor x. Uh, be what you want to write? Negation of contractor X uh, and uh, negation of uh, dependable X. For all X, negation of contractor X and negation of dependable X. Is this correct, others? Yes. No. No, sir. So for no, all sir. its contract no, no, X, first tell me why. If, this, if anybody has an objection, then tell me why it is wrong. Sir, I think it states that X is never a contractor and X is never a dependable. Right. This state, very good. Very good. This statement says that for everybody, everybody is not a contractor and not dependable. That's not what it says. It says that anybody who is a contractor is not dependable. It says no contractors are dependable. This is not what it says. This is not the correct answer. Sir, contractor X implies contractor. not dependable X. Uh, uh, but what for all the what will you write? For, for all, all X? Yes, sir, for all X. Contractor X implies not dependable X. Implies not dependable X. What about this? What about Aren't others saying? Similar? Huh? Aren't these two similar not of um, A and B is equal to A implies B? Is that so? A implies B is not of A and not of B? A, no, implies, sir. A implies not B. Is it the same as not of A and not of B? So it is A implies B not A equals to not A and B, I think. Or is that so? So then what's the formula? What's the formula? I will tell you. You, you know, you all have now found it's everything not. is internet. If nothing is there, look at Google or teacher will tell you. You have forgotten the basic premise. A implies B is not A or B. What is the truth table of A implies B? If A is false, B is true. If A is false, A implies B is. What is the truth table of A implies B? If you are now saying, sir, tell me then what is the answer? That is true. true. That is true. False implies wait, true wait, is wait, true. Wait, 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 wait. The way he is responding, then tell me what it is. What is this? This is not A and B or not A or B? Sir, or, or B. No, who, who asked that then, that time? Yes, sir, I only asked it. Uh, or, so it is not, or. So now is it clear to you? Yes, sir. Don't forget basic things. So anybody has a doubt on this one that this is right or wrong? For all X, contractor X implies not dependable X. Is it OK or anybody has a doubt? Does anybody have a doubt? Uh, sir, hmm? when are we going to write for all X, contractor X and dependable X or not dependable X? When would and symbol come in middle? So you're asking when, what is the meaning of Yes. What is the meaning of for all X? 
contracted x, x and not dependable x. And we have written for all x contractor x implies not dependable x, right? Yes, sir. Can anybody tell me what is the difference between these two? He has asked this question. Can anybody help? Sir, first one tells that everyone should be a contractor and should not be dependable. Correct. The second one says? Second one says that if uh, someone is a contractor, then he cannot yes. be dependable. All right. Have you got understood it. now? Yes. Yes, sir. Got it. So the first one says that for all x, contractor x are not dependable x. And you can break it up and it will become like this. This is equivalent to for all x. It will be even more clear to you. And for all y. Because it says every person is a contractor and not dependable. The second one says, if you are a contractor, you are not dependable. So our statement yes. was all contractors are not dependable. So this is the correct statement. This is a very important point. Everybody should note that this doubt is a very important point. Anybody whose this part is not clear. Good. How will you write it with there exists? What is the meaning of there exists? So how will I write? Sir, can I write it like for every, there exists contractor X then uh, not dependable X? No, uh, uh, that is what is supposed to be there. There is a person there exists says there is somebody who is a contractor and not dependable. But that may Some mean contractors are not dependable. That is a different statement. There exist X. Contractor X. And not dependable X. Is not the same as this statement. These two are not the same. This says that some contractor is not dependable. The other one says every contractor is not dependable. How will you write every contractor is not dependable? It's a negation of negation uh, of there exists and contract is dependable. Correct. So you will write there exist X. Contractor X. And dependable X. The negation of the whole thing, right? This is what you're saying. Yes, sir. That is, I am finding somebody who is a contractor and dependable. This finding somebody who is a contractor and dependable is not possible. Clear to everybody? Akash Tripathi, is it clear to you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Then what was the second statement we had? Some engineers are contractor. OK, so how will you write some engineers or contractors? Uh, there, there exists exist X. Contractor X and engineer X. There exists X. Engineer X. And contractor X. Is that clear to everybody? Anybody has a doubt on this? Some engineers are contractors. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, in this case, why it will not be the case that there exists X? Uh, engineer X uh, implies contractor Very X. Very good question. Another good question. So now you say compare this with. The compare this with there exists X.
what is the difference between F1 and F2? We have understood the difference between G1 and G2. That we have understood. Now, what is the difference between F1 and F2? There exist X, engineer X and contractor X. And there exist X, engineer X implies contractor X. This Sir, it is not symmetrical. No, symmetrical is all right, but what is which one is right? Which one is wrong? F1 is right, we all know. But his question is, why not this one? The second statement also encompasses all contractors, even if they are not engineers. The, we no, are it does not encompass anything about a contractor. Like if that person is not an engineer and he if he's a like uh, a contract. The first one also doesn't tell you anything about not an engineer. It just says there's somebody who is both an engineer and a contractor. The second, when will the first one be false and the second one be true? Sir, if engineer is false, engineer X is false, then the first, first one. False. That means if there is no person who is an engineer. That means you are right. If engineer X is false for every X. If engineer X is false for every X, then F1 will be true or false. There's no false. engineer, F1 will be false. Yeah. F1 will be false, but F2 will be? F2 will be true. Who asked this question? Is it now clear? Yes, sir, I got it. So you have to be careful with your implies and your uh, and and for all and there is good. So now what we do is we now add these symbols and we write down our formula. So for Mary we write down F1 is for all X goes Mary X implies goes lamb X goes Mary school goes lamb school here are my constants are these are my constants mary lamb school are constants x is a variable goes is a predicate two argument predicate and i have used for all similarly the contractor example can be written as as we just discussed for all x contractor x implies not dependable x this implies cannot be written as and then we wrote there exist X, engineer X and contractor X. That also cannot be written as implies. Therefore, some engineers are not dependable is also written as engineer X and not dependable X. There exist X, engineer X and not dependable X. We also see here again, we will turn out to prove this is valid. The proof of validity means true for all interpretations. And the concept of interpretations will become much more complicated as we proceed. Now let's do these ones. All of you, please do the first one. Uh, all dancers are graceful. Aisha is a student. Aisha is a dancer. Therefore, some student is graceful. Please do it.
OK, what would be my predicates? Dancer X, Dancer. X Graceful X, Graceful X, Graceful X, Graceful X, Graceful X, Student X, and constant? Aisha. Aisha is a constant. What is F1? Akula Vikram, are you there? Akula Vikram, are you there? Apoorv Bansal, are you there? Apoorv Bansal, are you there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, what would you write? F1? So for all X. Um, uh, hello? Yes, I'm hearing you. Uh, yeah. For all X, then? Dance, it just only does human nature. Dance, Bhave Veer Malik, Bhave Veer Malik, Vishwanath, Vishwanath Haldar. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, for all x, uh, dx dx uh, implies uh, gx. Good. Thank you. Chavi Chaudhary. Yes, sir. How would you write the second statement? Aisha is a student. Sir, Aisha sx. S a. S a. Sorry. Sir, F3 is also there. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. D. What is, what is F3? Sir, D, A. And what is the goal? Sir, F1 and F2 and F3. Oh, sorry, no, no, sir. No. Sir, some student is graceful. Uh, mm -hmm. S, S implies G. G of X. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So there exist, there exist some x. There exist x, then? Sx. Sx. Implies gx. Implies gx. Gx. Everybody agrees? They yes, sir. Sir. No, sir. No, sir. It's and. 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 It should be and. Devji, Devji. Yes, sir. It should be? I am also thinking the same only. Just, just let me. Those who objected, please again come back and tell me what is your objection. Go to the SX and GX. Chavi. Yes, sir. They are saying it should be SX and GX. So you are saying it should be implies. Tell me which one it should be. Sir, sir, uh, uh, there uh, when SX implies GX also says that there exist some students who are earning. Uh, there exist uh, uh, some not uh, students who are graceful, but they are not students. They are maybe dancers. So what is correct? Is is this the is this goal correct? This with implies is correct or and is correct? Sir, I think implies is correct. You remember what we discussed just five minutes before this here? Some engineers are contractors and we said F1 was right and F2 was wrong. Yes. Sir. Isn't it the same thing? Some engineers are contractors. Some students are graceful. Oh, sir, I got it, got it. Debji? Sorry, sir. Uh, yes, sir, it's the same thing. It should be false. So for the false case, it will be end. Because it of the false. Yeah. And here again, we want F1 and F2 and F3 implies G to be a valid statement. So all of you do the next one.
जगदीप वेमुलापल्ली आर यू देर जगदीप जगदीप वेमुलापल्ली आर यू देर ज्योतिर्मय सिंह ज्योतिर्मय सिंह यस व्हाट वुड बी माय प्रेडिकेट्स इन द in this passenger wala example jyotirmay singh what would be my predicates i'm a little bit confused sir did you understand the previous one did you understand yes. the previous to previous two ones Yes, sir. Then what is what is your confusion here? Did you understand here why the predicates are dancer, graceful, student? Yes, sir. Here, if you don't try and your answer is I am confused, then uh, you will not learn anything. You are not concentrating. Ah, uh, one is ah uh, P X. For passengers, passenger X. Then, ah, uh, one for first class and second class. First class X, second class X, and one for wealthy and non-wealthy. Wealthy. Any any others? Anybody else? Any other predicate? Any constants? How would you write the first one? F one. Sir, for all x, passenger x implies negation of f of x uh, intersection uh, and s of s of x uni uh, or negation of x of x and f of x. You're taking exclusive or is it? Yes, sir. So you want to write it is exclusive or of first class and second class, right? Yes, sir. So how do you write exclusive or is negation of f of x and s of x or negation of s of x and f of x? Exor. Is everybody okay with this? This is exclusive or. Anybody has a doubt? Himadri Pandya. Himadri Pandya. Uh, professor, I just huh? wanted to ask. Since there are only two categories, first class and second class, can't we define second class as a negation of first class? Since they te didn't tell us that uh, there are only two categories, we don't know. Do you remember in older trains there used to be interclass, third class, AC two tier nowadays, AC three tier chair car? Ah uh, yes, sir, but I thought in this example since only two are mentioned, so yeah, it is not necessary. Otherwise, uh, you know that is an assumption. We we don't we need not make that assumption here. Sir, uh, we can make that conclusion from the uh, statement F one means. Otherwise, you cannot say that F X is negation of S X. Huh? It is not given to you. So it is whatever whatever is written uh, automatically will come. Because 
the train may have other classes. The train may have vegetable class, vendor class, engine, bogey, trailer. We don't know. It only talks about passengers being in first class or second class. Animals could be in another class. So first class implies negative, second class may not be true. It is only with respect to passengers. What is F2? Sai Subhash? Sai Subhash? Oh, yes, sir. What is F2? If you For don't Alex, class, you don't have to study hard. Huh? Tell me what. For Alex, P of X implies. P of X implies. Mm. S of like, S of X implies negative. S of X implies uh, not of W X. That's all. I intersection. And and intersection. Uh, and and uh, negation of WX implies S of X. Very good. Clear to everybody? If and only if. Tell Lambu Kushi ready or is, is it okay? Sir, I hmm? think I, I have wrote it in another way, sir. How did you write? For all X, P of X and S of X. Sorry, sorry. For all X, P of X and negation of W of X implies P of X and S of X. You have written, let me write down. For all X. For all x, p of x and negation of w of x. All, all in a single bracket, right? Ah, uh, which implies p of this x. This whole and thing, this whole thing implies. Ah, uh, yes, sir. What? P of x and s of x. So it says that if somebody is a passenger and not wealthy implies that person is a passenger there is no use of writing that and in the second class all right yes sir now sir uh, <coughs> so in the f2 the first statement you wrote f2 <coughs> where the end, uh, where the end statement is coming, like uh, Negation of WX implies SX. Have you read this statement, Prabha? If and only if? Yes, sir. What does so, if and only if mean? What does A, if and only if B mean? Sir, A, uh, A is valid if and only if B is valid. A implies B and B. You have forgotten all your proofs. The if and only if proofs that you did in math. You have to prove this side implies that side and that side implies this side, Anna. Okay, okay. Got it. Remember? Thanks. If and only if is a two way proof, no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So now, now tell me here, firstly, uh, Kushi Reddy, you did not get both way implication, number one. All right. Oh, Secondly, if you have written Px and not of Wx, this Px is not necessary. Is it necessary, the second Px? Yes, sir, it's not necessary. It's not necessary. Okay, so that part is also clear. Now, tell me, if, if this was only the if condition, then you are saying that if somebody is now if all passengers you are saying if somebody is a passenger and not wealthy 
implies this person goes to second class. Yes, sir. Hmm. And what about the other side? How would you write? Uh, we should cover the case that uh, the first one is also uh, which should be true, in right, your, sir? In your theory, you will write passenger and second class implies implies not wealthy, not X. wealthy X. And you will add these two up, right? This is what yes, you will do. Yes, sir. Now tell me, anybody else tell me. This is one option he has given for F2. What is the difference between this F2 and this F2? Sir, if someone is not a passenger, this will result in true. Uh, achha, but that will, uh, okay, sorry. That will also result in true. This will result in true, that will result in true. What is, are these two identical or is there a difference? Sir, if uh, the if he is not a passenger and he is in second class, then it will give true always. If he is passenger and if he is not a passenger and he and uh, he is in second class. If it is not a passenger anyway, it is supposed to give true, no? Sir, if somebody is in second class. Then it will be different. Then it will be different. Now, what what will be the difference if somebody so, uh, is in second? Somebody class? is in not in second class. Sorry, somebody is in not in second class. Then uh, uh, statement uh, will be true. No, no, uh, no, no. So all of you will think about this. Please note this down and think about this and tell me whether they are identical or not. So somebody not in second class and somebody wealthy, then there will be difference. Somebody not in second class and somebody wealthy. Yes, sir. There will be difference in F2 of these two different versions. Tell me more details. Tell me where the first one and the second one will differ. Uh, in first one, there will be a passenger. So it will be true to false and here it will be so, sir, the F2, first version of F2 will be true and second version will be false. For what case? For what case? Uh, somebody uh, is in like second class and uh, no, somebody not in second class and somebody wealthy. So, you're saying that somebody is not in second class? Yes. But wealthy. Yes. So if somebody is not in second class, then this part will be true or false. This part is false. Yes. And this part is also false. Yes. So the whole statement will become so it, uh, false. Yes. And, and here, somebody is not somebody is wealthy so this will become false yes so this will become true and somebody not in second class very good yes. has everybody understood this has everybody understood this this is very critical to understand if you don't pay attention then you won't understand something very important which he has pointed out
who did not understand tell me malga kaushik have you understood yes sir like thinking about it so the first statement if i find there is somebody there is somebody who is in not in the second class and is wealthy that is my situation the opposite of what i want what i wanted then the f2 the first one will become false or true what will the first one become true or false because it's not in second class the left hand side will become for true and because it is wealthy the again no this will become true na f2 so will state. become true or false say so px is true then it will become false the px is true is known okay. there is a passenger there is a passenger who is in second class and wealthy this this statement will become true or false there is a passenger who is in the second class and wealthy is it true first uh, first step two will be true sir for someone who is not in second class and not well be then sir it will be true i think so what does my statement tell me my statement tells me the passenger is in second class if and only if the passenger is not wealthy so if the passenger is not wealthy then is in the second class if the passenger is in the second class then the passenger is not wealthy okay now for the case when the passenger is neither in the second class but is wealthy what will happen sir so both are true both are the right side is true no in f2 dash the second one the second one passenger is true all right so here the left side of f2 dash will be true in the first case because the passenger is wealthy it will become false and the passenger is not in second class it will become false so this statement will also become true so are these two identical or are these two different think about it very carefully and let me know next day sir they are identical right we can tell it come back and say harsh makwana you had pointed it out right yes sir i'm thinking now okay so tell us tomorrow whether this is true or not okay we'll stop you can stop the recording we'll continue tomorrow.